Oh, for a muse of fire. That would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage. Princes to act. And monarchs to behold the swelling scene. But, pardon. Pardon, gentle Zoe. The flat unraised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? The vasty fields of France, or? Or may we cram within this wooden O? Within this wooden O. This wooden O. This, this wooden O. The very casks that did affright. That did affright the air at Agincourt. The very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may. Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may. May attest in little place a million. And let us, ciphers, Ciphers. Ciphers to this great account. To, to this, this great, great account. account. And let us ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work. On your imaginary forces work. On your imaginary forces work. Your imaginary forces work. Admit me chorus to this history. 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 Chorus to this history. Chorus to this history. Chorus, Chorus to this history. Chorus to this history. This history. Who? Prologue like. Prologue like. Prologue like. Who prologue like. Who prologue like. Who prologue like. Prologue like. Who prologue like. Your humble patience pray. Your humble patience pray. Your humble patience pray. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 2020 Folger Gala Online. I'm delighted to have so many friends joining us to celebrate tonight. I love the feeling of being together with people, which is definitely part of the thrill of live theater. It's also one of the wonderful aspects of working at the Folger. It's a shame we can't be together tonight, but I know the day will come when we can celebrate together again, and I look forward to it. You know, we really are living through a once-in-a-generation set of changes that are resetting the way we think about our humanity. Whether it's the response to racial violence or the global pandemic, we're once again asking ourselves what it means to live with one another in community. And as governments are casting about for answers in the form of policies and programs, I think we need to understand also how art, history, and the humanities can provide insights during these incredible times. That combination is one that the Folger brings to the current moment. Our historic building has been closed for renovation, but we are busier than ever. When the pandemic started changing our world, we began serving up our digital programming in ways that we just had not imagined. I hope you've had a chance to enjoy some of these performances and online conversations that have now been seen by hundreds of thousands of people. None of this engagement would have been possible without your support, and it's your generosity that we are gonna celebrate tonight with the help of tiny electrons that are gonna whiz around like Ariel and bring faces and voices to your screen. Tonight wouldn't have been possible without our incredible gala co-chairs, Jose Andres and Patricia Fernandez de la Cruz. We first got to know Jose and Patricia through our Mellon-funded research project on early modern foodways called Before Farm to Table. Well, what started as research has turned into a wonderful collaboration, and tonight you're going to get a taste of what we discovered in our collection. Please join me in welcoming Chef Jose Andres. Hello, everybody. Here, uh, Chef Jose Andres, uh, who was going to be telling me and my wife that when we said that we will be very happy to chair these gala, that we were going to be in the middle of a pandemic and where everybody has to be home and loving each other is staying away from each other so here uh, I am not only uh, the co-chair but I guess right now I'm also the entertainer and because I am a cook and the only thing I know really is a little bit about cooking um, I'm gonna cook for you why is it so important to preserve uh, the lessons from the past 
that keeps moving humanity forward. Uh, why is it so important that we support the Folgers Library? Well, this pan pandemic is the example because we don't learn from the lessons of the past. That's why it's so important that libraries like the Shakespeare are supported all the time. And myself, I used to try to communicate with the world the power of food to remind everybody who we are. Uh, I go back to books because it's something is really in my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't have the collection that the folders have, nobody does. But I've been all my life uh, collecting all books, first editions. I have this one over here, which is uh, from Juan Altamira. Uh, one of the uh, early influential chefs from um, 1758. Um, uh, I have hundreds of books. And for me to be able to be visiting and bringing students from the University of Teach of Washington to the Folgers has been one of the most spectacular moments of my life. And I've learned so much. And, and yes, the, the folios, the, 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 the Shakespeare original, the collection is amazing, but there's so many other secrets that uh, the Folgers Library has, uh, um, and especially cookbooks. Today we're gonna be cooking from the Virginia Housewife. And why are we cooking from here? Because you know, the country I come from is Spain. The country I belong is America, are the two loves of my life besides my wife and my family. And and every time I find things that is building bridges. And this is what history does. History builds bridges. And not when the past builds bridges between the past and the present, so we can go to a good future. And for me, when I see a recipe that brings the best of Spain and brings the best of America into one, I cry. So who was going to tell me that in the Virginia housewife, early 1800s, with all the history of Margaret Randolph and her connections to President Thomas Jefferson, that here we will have a recipe for gazpacho. Um, we did more Spanish tradition, but take a look what we're gonna do here. We're gonna be chopping the tomato, in this case, it's slicing it very thin, very thin, like this. And then we're also going to slice the cucumber. Perfect. I have the tomatoes already peeled. The cucumber, we're going to do thin slices, very thin slices. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can cut. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I just throw a piece of bread on the floor, but I can cut. And now, we're gonna to try to follow the recipe. It says mustard. Today in Spain we don't use mustard, but we need to understand the back in times was a good way. So the mustard I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom, and I'm gonna put it right here. So mustard it is. It says some bread. I'm gonna put the bread right here. And then it says to put the layers of tomato. I'm gonna to put them right here. You see? Mm -hmm. This looks good already. And actually, this is very interesting. And then it says put some cucumber. I'm doing that. Slice is very thin, very important. And then it says sprinkle some onion. In some recipes, you find onion. Traditionally, onion would not be part of the dish. And then it says to repeat the same thing again. Let's do it again. I make sure everything is equal. I put more of the tomato. Like that, I don't care if it's like that. Then I put some more slices, like that. Then I put some more onion, like that. I put good, I forgot to put the salt, I do it now, in between. And then it says black pepper, like that. Then it says to stew tomatoes. We're not gonna stew the tomatoes, why? Because I don't, I don't wanna make a tomato sauce. But in the old days, I understand that that's the only way they could. I did two things. I had the traditional gazpacho of my wife. Yes, this is what we drink at home. Or I did some tomatoes fresh 
on the user. And what is very interesting is that you're going to see the separation of the pulp that goes above because it's very light and the water of the tomato that is in the bottom. That pulp is unbelievable, but better even the juice because you are eating the pure essence of the tomato. Amazing, important. So what I'm gonna do is to try to be as good with the recipe as we can. I'm not doing tomato sauce because a stewing tomato is what you will do, but I will get these from the top, which is the pulp, and put it over. And I put it over. And I put it over. Everything, you see? The separation is almost pure physics. Um, the heavier things will go to the bottom, the lighter things will go to the top. This is a great way to separate um, different ingredients in a liquid, making them puree with different densities. And look, I keep covering it, you see? And what's happening now? All this is gonna be going down, going down. It's gonna be very much uh, soaking the bread. Gravity, thank you, Newton, is gonna bring everything down. I know it looks obvious, but sometimes when we take the obvious for granted, we miss some of the most important things. And take a look here. Here is the pure tomato water. I guarantee everybody that if you drink this, your life will change forever. I was supposed maybe to put olive oil in between the layers, yeah, but I was talking and I wanna go quick. And then maybe I get a knife, and with the help of a knife, I make sure that I press a little bit and I even let some of the tomato reach everywhere underneath. And now, my friends, we are ready to go. This will be a gazpacho, Mary Randolph, and everybody should be very proud that we've been recreating a historical recipe right here, right now. But if anything brings us really together is the firm belief that to understand the present and move into the future, we must know our past. That's why it's so important with your presence today that you support the Shakespeare Folders Library. With the history in those walls, we can plant the seed in the new generations that we should be more prepared to confront the many issues we are gonna be facing in the years to come. History will carry us forward. History will give us the backbone of understand where, where, who we are, and where together are we going. Sometimes everything starts with a humble, simple dish. Thank you for supporting, important, your donations that forever to have a library that we can always go back when we feel a little bit lost. I know has helped me make sure that we help many others. Thank you. Bye. Good evening. My name is Mei Liang and I am chair of the Board of Governors of the Folger Shakespeare Library. Welcome, we are so pleased that you are joining us for this special evening. Gifts in support of the Folger Gala provide critical operating support that enable the Folger to explore humanity's future by understanding more about our past. I wanna thank all of you who sponsored the 2020 Gala. In particular, our lead sponsors, Vint and Sigrid Surf, and Timothy and Linda O'Neill, and our prime sponsors, Susan Sachs Goldman, and the Honorable Eugene and Dr. Carol Ludwig. Thank you so much. We are deeply grateful for all of you who have made gifts in support of the Folger. You make our work possible. And we are so excited about the wonderful evening in store. Please join me in welcoming favorite Folger actors, Kimberly Schraff and Craig Wallace. Oh. <laughs> 
Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I loved nothing so well as you. But believe me not. And yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. On that sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest. I love thee. Why then, God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest. I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that uh, none is left to protest. <laughs> Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. Huh. Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. I am gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, I pray you, let me go. Beatrice. In faith, I would go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh. I were a man. Oh, God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Oh, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul, the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero. Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand. And so I leave thee. Farewell. Thank you, Kimberly and Craig, for that wonderful performance. I am Susan Sachs Goldman, Chair of the Wonder of Will Campaign Committee, and I would like to personally thank all the supporters of the Wonder of Will who have contributed $32.5 million toward our $50 million goal. The Wonder of Will Campaign will expand the reach of the world's largest collection of Shakespeare and we wouldn't be breaking ground on such an important project without the generosity of so many. Thanks to the supporters of the $1 million groundbreaking challenge, we have raised more than 2.2 million in new support during one of the most challenging times in recent history. We are heartened by this display of generosity, which speaks directly to the enduring importance of Shakespeare and all that the Folger has to offer. I commend the Board of Governors for their leadership and philanthropy, especially members Jarrett Arp, Rebecca Bushnell, Vince Cerf, Florence Cohen, Roger Millay, and Gail Pastor for contributing a total of $1 million in matching funds that doubled the impact of our groundbreaking challenge. We are breaking ground on a new pavilion that will feature accessible galleries and inviting public spaces for all. Our hope is that by expanding our space, opening up our collection, and reimagining our programs, we will bring Shakespeare to life for diverse audiences. On behalf of the Board of Governors and in celebration of our supporters and dedicated staff, I am delighted to share with you now a first glimpse of the wonders our renovation will bring to Capitol Hill. Our play is at the end. There's no more time to spend. This is
comes a moment when the curtain has shut temporarily and one act is over, but another act is about to begin. We feel like this is a moment in time in the life of this institution. What has gone on here to get ready for this renovation to begin has been an extraordinary amount of work on everybody's part. Oh, I love big projects, and I think this one is terrific. Shakespeare once wrote, we know what we are, but we know not what we might be. And that's where I think the Folger is. We know what the Folger has been to teachers, to scholars, to actors, to the public. The potential of the Folger is yet to be unlocked. We are making these ideas more accessible, and we're creating a space where people can learn and collaborate and see and visualize and interact with ideas and the text. The Folger is an undiscovered gem. And I think if we can expand what we can show, we'll be out there sparkling. It is a step beyond the wonderful work the Folger has done for the last 90 years. The renovation really allows us to create a new blueprint for connecting the collection to the performances on the stage. To be able to see a play in the theater and then to see the first folio is just an amazing opportunity. When visitors come in, it's going to be different from the moment they come in. The way they're greeted, their paths through the exhibits, they'll be able to get much closer to the collection and much closer to the world of performance and of literature and poetry than we've been able to do before. We're an old building. We opened in 1932. So we are not easily accessible to older people, people with mobility issues, families with strollers. The simple fact that we remove those barriers, I think, is really important to welcoming as many people as we can. This is the moment when the Folger actually goes public. We've done wonderful work on our stage. We've done terrific work in our exhibitions. But we just haven't had the opportunity to interpret the whole thing. And to take the beauty of poetry and the wisdom of history and share it at the footsteps of democracy. How far away? Six feet? So we do six, six to eight feet. feet. That is the distance of the moment. That is. Okay. This is a reality. We have a $50 million goal, and we're well over the halfway mark, and we, we just need to get over the finish line, which I'm confident we will. Madam Chair. Thank you. One of the lovely things about The Wonder of Will is that it looks beyond just the space. It also involves scholarship and acquisitions, collections and exhibits. And so there's something, I hope, that appeals to every single person. And we really appreciate those who have supported all facets of the campaign. I can't believe this moment is finally here. It is here. I kind of feel like it's my responsibility. I would extend that responsibility to everyone else. If everyone will jump in and help to the extent they can, this new project will be successful, and we owe it to the institution to help take the next step. This is a place for everyone. It's a place for everyone to come in and to see themselves and to experience themselves anew. We were already thinking about how to go virtual because of our renovation. And then the pandemic hit. And all of our plans for making the Folger alive online became more real and more important. I'm really invested in understanding and thinking through the power structures that guide our day-to-day -day lives. Who are we? Where are we going? What do we owe one another? The greater the turmoil, the more we need this writer who pushes us to think about these questions. On behalf of the Folger Board of Governors and everyone at the Folger, we are so proud to be breaking ground at this moment. We're inspired by the future, and we look forward to sharing Shakespeare and this wonderful collection with all. Here we go.
Thank you all for being here with us to mark this important moment in the Folgers history. We are breaking ground so that everyone for generations to come can make new discoveries and draw new insights from our fabulous collections and programs. We look forward to the time when we can welcome all of you into our new galleries and celebrate the generosity of our supporters who have made this project possible. We invite you to become involved in the Wonder of Will campaign and join us who believe that Shakespeare and the humanities can help us learn from our past, talk to each other, and shape a better future. There is a story for everyone in Shakespeare, and we welcome you to come and explore the wonder of will with us. As Shakespeare himself wrote, and this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. With your generosity and support, the possibilities for the Folger finding good in everything are endless. And now I would like to introduce a performance of Arise Ye Subterranean Winds, performed by Solomon Howard, a regular on the Metropolitan Opera stage, and pianist Kevin J. Miller on staff at the Houston Grand Opera. Rise and obey, rise and obey, 
Thank you for that lovely performance. I'd like to speak to you now about where the Folger is today and where we're headed. You've seen us turn the dirt on our renovation, and you've heard about our physical plans for our wonderful building. But we're more than a building. We're a place where important ideas about history and the human experience are advanced in and for an increasingly diverse community. As human beings, we struggle with basic questions and choices. When to fight, when to listen, when to rage against injustice, when to love. Generations of poets, writers, and historians have asked these basic questions, coming up with answers that were a product of their times. We need to ask these questions again, and it's my hope that these very Shakespearean choices what can we hope for? What can we do? Are probed by a more diverse generation of thinkers and leaders. Our newly renovated building will offer great opportunities to widen and deepen the powerful conversations that the Folger is going to sustain. You know, Shakespeare, Shakespeare lived through a time of incredible change, and he was one of the most creative people alive. We're going to need more creative people, more wide-ranging thinkers and writers to meet the challenges that are ahead of us. By broadening the circle of what the Folger can do in a thoughtfully renovated building filled with new programming, we will make sure that the benefits of careful, challenging thinking, aided by world-class collections, terrific performances, and probing research that these serve the widest possible audience. We're in the process of becoming an even more public institution, which means telling the stories of all people in an atmosphere of abundant welcome. I know I speak for the entire Folger community in thanking you for helping us realize this vision. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Folger board member and distinguished Shakespearean actor, Sir Simon Russell Beale. This is Simon Russell Beale speaking to you from the rather cold and autumnal English countryside. I'm very disappointed that I can't be with you in person, but I send you warm wishes at this celebratory time for the Folger, which is quite simply one of the greatest libraries in the world. I'm very proud to be a member, albeit a rather distant member, of the board and to play a part in this historic moment. The scope of the renovations is thrilling and it's very exciting to see the expanded reach that the new spaces and exhibitions will have. Shakespeare is, of course, for everyone and the Folger serves an increasingly diverse range of visitors, teachers, scholars and students. Long may that continue. Our cherished historic building and the beautiful public spaces we are creating will, I know, continue to welcome, uplift and inspire. It will be wonderful to experience that myself when I am finally able to cross the Atlantic. Again, my very best wishes to you all. Thanks for joining us tonight. I look forward to the time when we can once again come together and celebrate in person. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <laughs>